There's a very big misconception going on between dynamic range and also highlight roll-off. So cameras can have the identical dynamic range, but the highlight roll-off looks way different. Why is that? In this video, we're gonna demystify that. So hope you learned something coming up. Hi guys, my name is Paul. I'm a German-based cinematographer and this channel is all about filmmaking, gurus, but also DaVinci Resolve tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribe. That really helps the channel. Thank you. So as you've seen probably in my last video where I compared the S1 II against my Red Dragon, both have very similar dynamic range. It's up to nine stops of exposure latitude. It's about 15 stops of dynamic range. And I was testing then the highlight roll-off. So I blasted a hard light source into the wall and I got some pretty interesting results because the red was always better when it comes to that. It was a high defined edge between uh, on the S1 uh, S12 and on the Red Dragon, it looks very filmic, very smooth. So there were people complaining about, hey, uh, you have to film in B-RAW and you have to use other codecs, yalla yalla. So I did that. So now since Blackmagic has updated uh, their recorders, I was able to record Blackmagic RAW on the S1 II. So I did three tests here, one recording in V-Log, then recording in re log and then recording in B-RAW. And you guessed it, <laughs> everything looks exactly the same. So the highlight roll-off doesn't change. So the codec is not the issue, which I was already supposing because I tested that also on my Red Dragon last time between ProRes and R3D and the results were exactly the same. So now I also tested the Blackmagic Cinema 6K against the S12, both recording in Blackmagic RAW. And as you can see here, the Blackmagic RAW looks better. The highlight roll-off is much smoother. So, and obviously the S12 has a higher dynamic range than the Blackmagic Cinema 6K. And also it's an exposure latitude, uh, almost two stops difference. So that's pretty crazy actually. But as you can see here, the highlight roll-off on the Blackmagic is better. Then I also did another test having the S52X in that mix as well and also here even though the s12 and the s52 hex have a different dif dif difference in dynamic range the s12 is much better the highlight roll-off looks exactly the same so then here you can see the metrics between the red dragon then also the red komodo the black magic cinema 6k and the s12 and i can honestly say that uh, the red dragon looks the best for me the komodo looks almost identical, even though also Komodo has lower dynamic range than the Red Dragon. It's also about one, one and a half stops of difference. And then for me, then comes the Blackmagic Cinema 6K. And then we can clearly see that there's a hard, sharp, defined edge in the bright spot, and then it goes off to normal exposure. And the transition on the other cameras is much smoother which looks much more filmic and much more pleasing to my eye. So as we can see, the neither the codec has an impact, nothing else. It's just the image processing. So the way the signal is processed into the camera. And that is something that each camera manufacturer makes different. So therefore, there's also no difference between the S52X, the S52, and also not the Red Dragon and the Red Komodo even though they have a different dynamic range, it's just how the image is processed into the camera. And that's something why I really like RED because I think that looks really, really nice and really natural. Now, before we're gonna wrap up this video, we have to talk about what is really better now, dynamic range or highlight roll off. And that's, there's a difference here because dynamic range describes how many information your camera is able to record in yeah, the lower exposure and also in the higher exposure in the highlights and in the shadows. So for example, if you have an interview and you have a window in the background and you're able to still expose the character, the subject correctly and the image is, or the, the window is a little bit brighter and you're still able to record everything inside the dynamic range of the camera. So this is important to have. The highlight roll-off on the other hand is if an information is already clipped. If there's information gone, then it's lost, it's overexposed, there's no, yeah, you are not, not able to bring that back. 
how the transition is now handled into the normal exposed exposed areas because there are always brighter parts in the image as well there are normally exposed parts and are darker parts that's how most images look like right so therefore you can actually there's a good way to describe it dynamic range is when the camera clips and highlight roll off is how the camera clips but highlight roll off is also if you have the highlights which are not clipped and then you have also the normal exposed area also the transition how it blends in there's also a way to see it and if that's more smooth more graduated is also visible in the image and has a pleasing more filmic image so both are as equally as important but in their way they are also different and i hope that demystifies everything so yeah pretty interesting and also from now on i will also include into my camera comparison not only the exposure latitude but also now the highlight roll off because it's a pretty fun test to do and i hope you learned something and like i said if you like this channel please subscribe help the channel to grow and yeah guys enjoy the evening see you in my next one cheers